Hey guys, welcome to JR's Junk Drawer. I'm JR, this is Boots, and this is Dukina. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be honest. I'm feeling inspired and I want to try my hand at a genre mashup. So, Orc Samurai. I feel like there's a lot of room to experiment and interpret different ways of combining those two themes. What would make this orc have samurai characteristics? What would their backstory be? Questions like these can heavily impact how we portray the visual appearance of this character. So throughout today's painting, I thought it'd be cool to talk about the process I use to flush out a character's personality and how that can impact their design. But I'm not gonna make any progress just sitting around here talking about it, so let's jump in and make it work. Getting started on this project, because I don't have a lot of experience painting samurais, and I have, like, no experience painting orcs, I'm gonna to need to look up some references. Now, I won't be showing the references I used, because there was no one image I used as a reference. There were dozens. I simply searched orc on Google and browsed through the results, and got an idea for what their musculature and their facial structure looks like familiarizing myself with an orcish appearance, getting an idea for their jawline, their ears, things that being inexperienced at painting orcs, I might very easily overlook. And then I did the same thing for samurai. But I deliberately never looked up orc samurai because I didn't want that to have an influence on how I see this mashup working. So if you're interested in looking at the references I used, Google search samurai and orc. It should pull up some perfect images. And if you're painting along with me on this, I would highly recommend it. Now with the basic structure mostly out of the way, I think, uh, we can start talking about character design. I find it helps if you really want to breathe life into a character to flush out the character's personality. Maybe even with a quirk or two. Now, I'm not saying you'll need to work on every little backstory detail. That would be if you were interested in building the whole story. No, no. What I'm talking about is more of a personality rough sketch, if you will. That way we can start to imagine how their personality would react to the situations we've built around them. Questions like, who are they? What are they? Or maybe as simple as what is their origin can springboard us into an entire design for their appearance. And for this character, the first defining question that I had, what makes this orc a samurai? Pretty straightforward. But there are a few different directions in which I could go with that mental image that drastically changed the character. We could always have it be a regular thing for this fantasy world, that orcs have a Japanese-inspired culture. Or we could swing to the complete other end of the spectrum to have a battle-hardened orc that might wear various samurai armor as trophies of previous battles. You could actually get very creative with that idea by having the armor all mismatched, indicating that there might have been many battles. But for this character, while I've been filling in details around the canvas, I've also been putting some thought into who this character is. I picture this orc having been orphaned at a very young age, being raised by a samurai who has since passed away, leaving behind their now broken katana that our orcish friend here now uses as a short sword. One thing of note is that my concept here isn't a reskin samurai that just happens to be an orc. 
and I do want that to be reflected in this character's approach to combat. And that is where the idea for the axe comes in. To me, this character is a dual wielder who uses this short axe in combination with the broken katana. But despite his ferocious appearance, he would use both items with a surprising level of finesse and precision. Overall, whether it's the axe, katana, the kimono, or even the sin bone he uses as a hairpin, there are opportunities everywhere to not only express the story through the design, but to also have the story directly influence the design itself. But if you'd prefer to not have to worry about any kind of story, I find it also works to fall back on just doing a quick character bubble, where you can focus on the basics, the character's name, traits, and personality type. Those are the things I usually cover, but you can always throw in a fun note if something comes to mind. Now, of course, you could always flush out a character's story with even more details, which can be a fun experience. Maybe our orcish protagonist has a conflicting backstory. Maybe their adopted parent was given orders to wipe out a clan of orcs, but in doing so, they felt guilty enough to go into hiding and raise the last remaining orc child in secret. Years later, our protagonist could have the opportunity to learn the truth over the course of their story. When you build an original character and you consider the world and story they come from, you can find opportunities to reflect that in the artwork. All of this, I find, can make the character feel more grounded in their world, no matter how wacky or crazy the story they might come from is. And for me, it's a much more fun experience when I'm painting a character I feel invested in. And it's one of the biggest reasons why I feel flushing out the story of an original character you've designed, even just a little, can really be worth it in the end. I'm really happy with the results here. Like, I cannot stress that enough. When I started this painting, I wasn't sure that it was going to turn out. Like I said earlier, I have no experience painting orcs. This whole physique and stronger jawline, I'm, I'm just so happy it turned out as good as it did. I did struggle in a few places, like over on the arm, on the like uh, his right arm quite a bit. I think it was really the perspective that was throwing me, and I know it probably flew by in the speed painting. After all, there's not much arm there. Most of it's off canvas. But that was something I spent a couple of hours not happy with. I did finally manage to work through it after I took a picture of my own arm in the pose. Whenever I struggle with a pose, one of my best fallback options is to strike the pose myself and take a picture. A visual aid can make all the difference. On the other side, we have the pauldron, which, after looking at the samurai references, I knew I wanted the shoulder plate to have a layered armor look. I did, however, try to make the design feature more materials you'd expect to see on orc armor, making sure to include some wear and tear on it along the way. I didn't want it looking brand new, so it needs some scuffs and scrapes and deep gashes. And on a similar train of thought, I also kept the bolt heads uneven in their shape hoping they looked a little more handmade, kind of like maybe some hammered metal. This character really all came together awesomely, and from such a random starting place too. I mean, an orc samurai? It's not really a concept you run into every day. Yet, while the mashup feels unusual and out of place on the surface, I think it works once you dive into it. And while I'm sure it's been done before, I had a lot of fun figuring out how all the pieces fit together. But before we can call this project finished, there is still one last step that every original character should have. Our orc needs a name. So I'm going to send that question over to Instagram. And with the power of editing, we should be getting an answer the next day. Kevin. OK, now he's done.
Thank you to all my friends over on Instagram for helping me brainstorm a name. Keevan was a perfect fit, and I never would have gotten there if it wasn't for your help. So thank you. A lot of you, I'm sure, might have noticed that this painting was not done in my normal art style. Although, admittedly, this was not my first time experimenting with this technique. I have had uh, dabblings with kind of a sketchy art style before, but never to something to this degree before. Overall, it was still a lot of fun to dive into something unfamiliar and kind of learn as I go. What do you all think? Do you think it might be fun to dive into some more uh, art mediums, some other art mediums? Maybe even a crafty project for like, maybe like Tukina. And while you're down there in the comments, tell a story of an original character you've thought of. It can be anything, character, past, present, or future, whether you've painted it or not. Tell us a story, spin a tale. But that is going to be all for today. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, maybe even like forward it to a friend. All efforts are appreciated and really do help out the channel. Over here is an episode I drew a doodle dragon. It was another experiment into something I hadn't really attempted before and it turned out crazy. I really loved that painting. And over here is a video YouTube thinks you might like. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you all next time.